Now see five years the industry is moving towards how do you make more efficient OLTP solutions right which is like kind of on the ODS and like you know operational stores that can serve to those different channels and all so we, we're going to talk about that how Wells Fargo took that kind of a stand and then we have modernized this whole thing uh, to take it up so that's on card modernization so let me go to the next slide so our agenda I'm here I'm going to introduce what is this cards is about, right? Like to understand first the domain of it, right? What is this data and all those things. Second, I'll talk how we did modernization and how we are, you know, architecturally done this one and what is the performance and better things on this one, right? And then I'll talk about some lessons we learned on this, like, you know, which is definitely a, you know, must to take it up to see how you want to modernize or you want to take it up to your, uh, you know, organization. So what is cards, right? Uh, Again, like we all use credit cards, uh, we go shop around and all those things. So whenever you use a card, you know, before you receive the card, when you use the card and when you do payments, there is a lot of data happens behind the scenes, right? When you go use it, when you want to apply for a card, there is a process happens behind the scenes. When you go use the card, there is a transaction happens behind the scenes. And when you want to do a payments, there is a lot of payments, you know, data like process happens behind the scenes, which you need to work with different vendors, different uh, integration systems and all those things. Lots of data, right? Heavy data process, right? In all this way. So traditionally, you, how they've been handling these kind of transactional databases and things, right? You go, you store it in a database and you try to take it and process it out and then like serve it to the channels and other things. But what we thought is we want to go into more we call CARDS 2.0. What that means is we just want to focus on how to, how to make the ability for customer who can come through the many channels. Like, you know, now we have like so many media, like channels that we come through. Mobile, we have web, 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 web portals that you come, web application you come through. You have tabs, right? You know, you do that. And you have voice-based systems that's coming through it, right? So what we want to do is like, how do you make this seamless? Like all these channels come through, but it's seamlessly integrated to your backend systems that can serve your products and data without any kind of uh, complications. Right? That's number one, right? The other one is like, you know, how do you make it more resiliency part of it, right? Like how I want to test it, I want to deploy it, I want to make it much more, you know, kind of DevOps at the same time with, you know, do it in much more modern way, right? The reusability of things, right? That's a big part of it, right? Like whenever you do these kind of modernization, I don't want to go rebuild this like for every channel, like or every consumer coming in. Like how do you make it this is more reusable platform, which can be expanded or say, you know, like uh, take it up to the next level. Then we talk about the, you know, less dependencies, right? Like, uh, you know, if I want to enable this kind of uh, data for my, my channels or consumers, I don't want to put like another three layers of you know when uh, products coming into picture and serve that same data for different uh, types of things. So how do you achieve that, right? With all these things and also you know the industries again when we talk about data, we want to do, want to more product productize the data, right? Keeping all this mindset, we now we went into Cards 2.0 program and where this ODS is all about, right? So ODS can solve all these problems with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, like approach that we want to take it. Why MongoDB, right? Obviously, like, you know, when we look into ODS, ODS is all about subsequent service, right? Like you need to take a data, you need to serve it to your channels or you need to serve it to your other capabilities that you want to build it on. So Mongo is definitely, you know, it's a scalable uh, product, uh, which, which is definitely for uh, this purpose, especially for ODS purpose. We stress tested this before we picked it up. Uh, you know, it can scale up to seven, seven plus million transactions per hour, but we did test it out, make sure even though we are not close to that, but still we stress tested it and make sure this can scale up to any product that we can bring it into it. So Mongo has that be better resiliency power and then also a better control to it. Like when I say control, right? So Mongo, when, whenever you put it on, like you want to do a scalability, right? Like you want to take it up and shred it into different uh, nodes and all those things. You can easily do it without like any kind of, you know, you need to put like some kind of a configuration changes. You need to do all those things. You don't need to care about that. It can take care of that, right? 
very tight deadlines like again uh, Mongo is a native of JSON right so all developers who can take it up like API build development or consuming these things Mongo is very native to them right you can build those APIs with with no time and it, you can work with that that kind of skill set without any issues so that's another reason why we picked Mongo so operational data store i just want to give a background of this right like uh, this term is becoming pretty famous nowadays i know some of you already doing ods uh, kind of concept some of them are thinking about to do an ods we just want to make sure you know we we put this in a real context here so when we looked into it as i said like you know uh, when our bank work with cards it has huge data set right like you have products in the card then you have different dimensions to it, like transactions, statements, there's a different uh, types of things you manage it out. What we did is, we, we have been pulling the data from the external vendor, like Pfizer, for example. So we do a lot of, uh, this data is coming as a mainframe data, right? Like uh, it's a mainframe system, which does our gateway, uh, you know, where you, whenever you go swipe, it all goes to the mainframe system. And that data comes into Pfizer, that's a SOR for us and we want to bring the data within Wells Fargo so that we can enable our capabilities like you know not just for serving to channels also doing some other capabilities within the business business line so this is a, this is like a, you know the challenge right like you you want to deal with the mainframe system and you want to enable a modernized uh, consumer so how do you how do you going to bring it on right so what we did we 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 pulled it up like you know the mainframe uh, uh, the files and then like you know push it to mongo and mongo serves to the channels right that's another one part of it the other thing like you know just want to understand uh, you know the the high uh, value that bringing out to this right so operational store is like you know we address a lot of uh, subsequent issues right like when you serve it to the consumers so you now how do you make it up for example like you have microservices running on your channels right so how do you keep those microservices can serve the data from Mongo uh, or from the operational store, which can serve to the same, you know, the same data can be sent to the other capabilities as well, right? So this data, what we are receiving it from mainframe, we, we bring it out and uh, you know, there is a two ways, like I'm going to show the other slides to show you the architecture side of it, how, what are the different uh, ways we are bringing in, one is the batch, the other one is the real time. But, uh, but the, the idea here is like, you know, operation store that, you know, which, which basically that uh, repl replicate what your SOR is, like what we call SOO, like system of origin, because still SOR is the external system, but we bring it to our Mongo and we serve it from here. So let me jump into this one, right? This will give you some uh, clear picture of what exactly I'm talking about. So you see the input sources, right? We have multiple SORs. Some of them are external, some of them are internal. We use Spark uh, for the ETL tools, like where we process those ETL process data. Um, we bring the mainframe files, uh, Epsilon files is a format which converts to ASCII, you know, where we use the Spark to do that. Then we extract that information and we push it to Mongo. Right, that's the batch file. Every night we get it from Pfizer and we push that to the Mongo. The second is the real time capability, right? Like uh, we receive those transactions live from the external source through Kafka. Like, you know, we receive those three real time uh, Kafka uh, events and then we push that to Mongo as well. These two data sets stores within the Mongo one single ODS platform, right? So you see the consumer side, right? Like as I said, multiple consumers, multiple types of consumers coming and grabbing the data, you know, which, which basically goes through the data APIs, right? What we built it out. So these data APIs built it on top of Mongo is like we productize those data APIs. It's, it's not like, you know, we just keep it like collections and we expose collections to those uh, consumers. We create an in-between, we call Fazard uh, kind of a layer where we build those data APIs, which is basically uh, productized data APIs, which expose like, you know, for example, accounts and statements kind of stuff, where you can have these kind of microservices in top, 
which can be used without like any kind of a product specific areas right you can do a productless or headless like uh, consumers that can take it up and run it see the other capabilities also we are consuming it from mongo is not just apis right we are also talking about business rules so we have business rule engine which is like a kind of analysis like it does business you know like for example like fraud analysis like you know very very easy way to talk about so these business rules runs on top of this ods as well and mongodb push the data to those uh, business rule engine and we able to consume that ad, uh, data as well and we have rewards program loyalty programs in you know like where they consume the data from ods uh, they also run programs to calculate your rewards and other things and it can it can serve to those consumers as well i think the high level part like what i'm trying to explain here is mongo can scale up to this kind of uh, you know different use cases when it comes to an api or it can come to a business rule engine or you do it from the rewards program it can still serve that kind of a data so i think i covered most of it um uh, again from the sizing part of it if you can see it right you know we have like 20 plus terabytes of data stored into the mongo uh we have more than that uh, you know transaction side per day as well um and this is also sub to it so little bit talk about the curated data products right so whenever you build this ods right like whenever you think about ods you need to start thinking about productizing that right you can't just build it like a traditional database you know you store it and you serve it right you need to productize you have to build this curated data products what we call right so what we did that's that's part of our 2.0 transform transformation uh, for all our credit card uh, business right which is basically like breaking down this relational things and build more a product based uh, uh, curated models right which help for example for rewards right they will they need uh, you know they 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 can't go into accounts and then like get into more other relational database we created this curated models where rewards can get, get what they needed and they can process it and get it done that's one example right similarly like you, you know any other consumers coming this curated data models can help to get what the result they need and and take it up with from there the facade layer uh, you know it's one of the uh, very important factor for us for 2.0 see the facade layer is all about like as i said how do you build that like headless microservices for example right like you build those services which can support any products uh, product line within that business right so your data layer should support that that's what we call facade like you know you have database and you have apis and in between you create that facade layer where you expose these kind of data products through that facade layer so consumers can take it and expose to multiple channels in a different ways so that's that's the power of that facade uh, layer what we have just mentioned about uh, yeah so just to just to talk about planning execution and learning right so as i said right like uh, planning is first of all i think you need to have a pretty big support from your leadership team uh, you know senior management taking this this is something that we need to invest we need to do it right you need to make that kind of a business case to say what why we need ods right like what is the power of the ods uh you know again what is the roi that we are trying to build with ods like you know with with like current pro business line versus like future business line what is that we are trying to take it up that's something that you need to plan it very well and then like execution obviously like you need to pick good partners like if you don't have the skill set you need to bring partners like you know who can help you out uh especially like execution you need to look into your like in you know, a capability of building that like with skill set and also your infrastructure and other things so how do you how do you take it up that that, that when it comes to execution part so execution is the, again like bringing the stakeholders together is another very key aspect of it when i say execution uh, you know the key stakeholders it's all about the consumer side is very very important because you can build the ods you can have everything ready but if you don't have a consumers or you don't have the channels shifted out to that then like your investment all it's going to stay for some long time and you know that that's something that you need to watch for it so i think that's on the execution and again uh, the timelines everything is like you know when when whenever you build that you need to make sure 
what team you're working with and what is your execution plan looks like learnings um, you know for us like uh, there is a lot of uh, trainings happen initially uh, we we uh, pulled our team we able to pull mongo for help like to train our uh, existing resources you know how to get learning on the mongo and then also like training on like you know how do you build this kind of uh, architectural changes right so now i'm talking about data products like what is that means like you know building that data governance kind of a concepts you know that is very very important for uh, the team to understand what they're trying to build uh, experience also like you know having that relational uh, database experience and other things uh, you know we worked with uh, you know especially like this 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 kind of a journey some of the vendors like you know mongo or like cap or like you know cap gemini like these kind of vendors we work with together and see how we can leverage their services to get the uh, lesson learned from like previous implementation how they did it so with with certain types of experience we we launched this hodes within 7 months you know that's the power of this whole open source products right like whenever you you pick this kind of architecture we build this in 7 months we deployed it in production we able to serve 40% of traffic diverted from our external vendor to our with with odes itself so that that kind of a timeline uh, you know it's 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 not like you know it's not easy to achieve like within 7 months you can take that much of value development life cycle change again uh, you can't go with the traditional way of how you build this ods kind of platforms you need to go into more agile agile mindset and agile methodology to follow with it when you build this kind of ods thing what that means is you can deliver the mvp first like what you want to achieve with that ods like you don't need to wait to build the whole rdbms kind of thing and then like you know you launch your program you can take an mvp launch the ods get your consumers up and running and then move on to the next thing so we we did that kind of a life cycle change into that like you know we brought into that that's where we were able to achieve that 7 months time period and get things done so with that I just want to thank you for joining this and I hope it's useful for you. Uh, I'm here if you have any questions I can take it up after the session. Thank you very much.